Hare Krishna. Welcome to the second course in our Bhakta degree program, How to Learn Effectively. Now, this is a very important course. This is really where the program takes off. The first course is just an introduction meant to get you into the flow of working with our teachers. But this course is really going to give you some material that's going to change your life. Why is that? Well, the educational process is broken. Actually, it's not education at all. It's merely schooling, training. And the purpose of the school system is not to educate people, not to teach people how to learn, but simply to train them in obedience so that they'll be good employees later on when they grow up. Or actually, you could say it another way. The purpose of the school system is to prevent people from growing up at all, is to prevent them from taking the steps they need to attain maturity. Maturity means freedom, freedom of knowledge, freedom of inquiry. But most people have the love of knowledge and the urge to make inquiries into various subjects drummed out of them very early in school. I want to share a story with you about how I came to this uh, understanding about the school system. It was very early. I was about 12 years old, and I was in the fourth grade of elementary school. My uncle, my mother's brother, was an aeronautical draftsman. And one day I was at his house, and he showed me a slide rule. I thought this was the greatest thing in the world because I was currently struggling to memorize multiplication tables. <laughs> so I started using this slide rule. Actually, I taught myself how to use the slide rule. And I was very excited about this. So the next week I brought it to school. We had a period called show and tell where we'd get up and show about some project that we were doing on our own. So unfortunately, before the show and tell period was the mathematics period. And so uh, as long as I had my slide rule with me, I started doing my math problems on the slide rule. My teacher came along and said, what are you doing? Well, I'm solving my math problems. Well, what's that? Well, that's a slide rule. I brought it for show and tell today. And then my teacher accused me of cheating. And I said, what do you mean cheating? I'm getting the right answers, aren't I? I've been using this for weeks, and it's worked out fine. Oh, this made her very upset. So we had this long argument about how I was learning independently, and this was not good, and so on and so forth. So uh, I refused to back down, and I found myself in the principal's office. Now, the principal and I had the same discussion. Oh, you're cheating on your math problems. No, I'm not. I'm learning independently. I'm doing college-level work. See, this was my position. So I refused to back down, and the teacher actually called my mother and made her come into the school. And then there was a very awkward meeting with the principal, the teacher, my mother, and I. And my mother was like, what's your problem? The kid is learning on his own. Isn't that what you're supposed to be doing, teaching kids to learn? And no, no, he's cheating. He's using a slide rule on his math problems. That was all they could say. They couldn't say anything else. They didn't have anything else to say. And at 12 years old, I was forced to realize that these people are idiots. At that time, I, of course, I was punished. I was sent back to the second grade for two weeks. Fortunately, my second grade teacher was actually a decent human being and allowed me to lead the class in reading and other activities. And when I came back, to the fourth grade, I had made a very important decision. Okay, I have to go to school. I have to be there, what, five or six hours a day. And while I'm there, I'll do whatever you tell me to do, fine. But once I walk out the door, my time is my own. And I will use it to learn whatever I want to learn. I will not do homework. I will not study. I will simply use my native intelligence to get whatever grades I can get by being in school. And that's it. Huh? Your time is, is during school hours, and the rest is my time. 
and I had the support of my mother on this. So she even gave me, she even gave me a note that I could take out and read any book whatsoever from the public library, which infuriated the librarian because she was a censor and she didn't want young kids taking out certain books. And of course, I was interested in books on yoga and philosophy and other things that she thought I shouldn't have access to. Well, too bad. So I used my young life, my spare time outside of school, not to watch TV, although I did a bit of that, but I, I used it to practice music and I used it to read. And especially during the summers, I would read voraciously whatever I wanted to get my hands on. And I have to admit, I didn't understand it very well. A lot of it was way over my head. The point is, I had the freedom to inquire. And most people get that drummed out of them very early. Huh? So what we're going to do in this lesson, what we're going to do in this course, is look into a different philosophy of learning. That the student should be in charge of what they learn. And the teacher should simply be like an assistant or facilitator that helps the child or helps the student get access to the materials, methods, and understandings that they need to approach that material. All learning is ultimately about skill. It's ultimately about doing something. Uh, the theoretical learning is only the beginning. The uh, study of the books and so on is just what gets you started. Real learning means expanding your skills. And we're going to focus on that in this course. We're going to show you a method of learning that will allow you to acquire any skill you want. Of course, we hope you're going to use it to acquire the skills of the esoteric teaching and spiritual realization. But the point is, first we have to rehabilitate your education. Otherwise, you won't be able to learn the esoteric teaching. Now, we found this in ISKCON that many people would come and get a very superficial understanding of the teaching, think they knew what it was when they actually didn't. Unfortunately, some of these people also became leaders and preachers and even gurus. And of course, they messed everything up because they did not have an accurate understanding. They did not have the ability to learn actually what was Prabhupada was saying in his books. So, I hope you take this lesson very seriously and use it to restructure your approach to all kinds of learning. And in that way, you'll not only be able to learn the esoteric teaching, you'll also be able to learn anything that your heart desires. This will change your life. So, welcome to the real beginning of the Bhakta degree program.